Greetings, members one and all of the Salvation Nation, the history of silver in the Silver State. Let's explore! Otherwise known as the Sagebrush State, because the Sagebrush is the state's state flower it's also known as the battleborn state as it was formed in 1864 and joined the union in the fight known as the civil war but it's best known as the silver state because of its history of silver mining that continues to this day and that is what nevada is all about or nevada depending on where you at and how you pronounce it to some folks it is not good to say Nevada. It's Nevada. Nonetheless, there it is. A very interesting shaped state, for sure. But before we get into that, I want to make you aware, I did a video a while ago about a giveaway that the Silver Forum had done for this 5-ounce cast silver bar here. And this is shrink-wrapped, and they have announced a winner in this drawing indeed so i'm bringing this along to you so that you can be aware that the winner is someone known as silver storm yes indeed who has a sign up there for the forum there and uh so silver storm is the winner of that five ounce silver bar the scottsdale mint very very cool scottsdale silver and a beautifully cast bar there brand new from atmex uh sealed and original wrap Indeed, and uh, the Silver Forum will continue to do giveaways as a sort of promotion to help uh, get the word out to their um, um, to the folks out there who are interested in discussing precious metals, especially silver these days. Uh, there's a lot of talk and a lot of stuff going on there, so the Silver Forum might be a place you might want to check out for sure. So I will post a link to this um, to this uh, to the Silver Forum in the description below. But now, the history of the Silver State, this is a cool little infographic here, and it talks about the history of Nevada's silver districts. In 2019, Nevada produced 6.28 million ounces of silver, and that's only behind Alaska. And actually, I didn't realize that Alaska uh, was, has produced more silver than Nevada. I figured they'd be num number one in the nation. But its reputation as a silver state goes way back in time, for sure. The timeline of Nevada's famous silver districts is as follows. We have the 1858 famous Comstock Lode, which is the richest silver deposit in American history. And of course, that was you know, nine years after the, the great 49ers discovered gold in California. Then in 1862, uh, silver was found in the Reese River District. So here we can see the Comstock load here. And then the Reese River dis District is uh, well to the east in the middle of the state there. And mining operations continue there until 1887. Then in 1863, in the midst of the Civil War, silver is discovered in the Cortez Hills. Today, the Cortez Gold Mine is one of the largest in the world. Yes, indeed. And there, just northeast of the Reese River District is the Cortez Mining District, still active today for the uh, gold there. And then in 1864, when the state actually formed and entered the Union, silver ore was discovered in the Eureka District. And we still saw peak mining there for a period of 20 years between 1870 and 1890. So there it is in the Eureka District, which is uh, due east of the Reese River District. And then in 1869, mining begins in the Pioche District. The Pioche District is the southernmost district here that we see, just south um, uh, southeast of Eureka District. And uh, that is something to see there. Production peaks there early in 1872 before a long-lasting decline. And then in 1880, we had the exhaustion, finally, of the Comstock discoveries. And then mining activity in the whole state had kind of slowed down. Then in 1900, there was a discovery that led to the 
one of the richest mining booms in the West, the Tonopah Silver District. And then we can see that due west of the Piochi District there. The legacy of the Silver State began with these great discoveries and lives on today as Nevada is consistently ranked among the top mining jurisdictions of the world. In fact, in some of my sponsored videos talk about gold mining, we've, we covered how Nevada was important in that regard. I think the fourth largest gold mining area in the, in the, in the world. So, Nevada's biggest silver districts, while most of Nevada's districts produce sizable amounts, few went on to produce more than 100 uh, million ounces of silver, creating hundreds of millions of dollars in wealth. A lot of that was used in our coinage. Historic silver uh, production in Nevada's famous districts. We had uh, 14,400,000 ounces in Eureka, and 7 million ounces in the Rochester district. And uh, you can see these others here. The Tonopah district was one of the Nevada's great silver discoveries, only behind Comstock Low, which had 192 million ounces, where Tonopah was 174 million ounces. And now you, may, and now you know why the Carson City Mint was formed. Carson City, Nevada um, was uh, formed there because of all that silver. You know, they can just produce the coins right there. And so let's talk about the Tonopah Silver District and the accidental treasure with Jim Butler. Tonopah's silver story began in 1900 when Jim Butler, a part-time prospector, stumbled upon silver while camping. The value of his silver ore was only realized after a few months when the sample results were returned. Um, as the news spread, prospectors and miners from around the country flocked to Tonopah in hopes of claiming their share of silver. By the end of 1901, the town had already produced $750,000 in gold and silver, which was a lot of money back then for sure. Uh, indeed. Boom. Then Butler's accidental discovery led to a new mining boom in Nevada and Tonopah. By 1905, Tonopah had its own railroad well on its way to becoming a famous mining district. Behind all this fame was a district's bonanza of high-grade silver. So here's the historic production average grade in Tonopah. You can see by these charts here, it shows you the uh, gold and silver grams per ton, and the gold uh, equalization ounces or EQ ounces. I'm not sure. That, I guess equivalent. I guess that's uh, probably meant to be copper ounces there. I think that's what, instead of AU, they should have used CU. Uh, but nonetheless, there is the copper, there is average gold equivalent grade, uh, and then silver way above there. Fascinating indeed to see how that was. And so T Tonopah is a silver primary district with a 100 to 1 silver to gold ratio. We know the average mining ratio between silver to gold is about 8 to 1. So very, very heavy on the silver side in this district. From 1900 to 1950, the Tonopah District produced high-grade gold and silver. Uh, average AUEQ grade was 50 grams per ton. And then for the silver, it's uh, tw uh, 2,126 grams per ton. At its peak years, around 1912, the district produced up to 450,000 uh, of gold EQ ounces per year. I mean, silver. Production from some of Tonopah's largest mines and the value of Tonopah's mineral production was in excess of $150 million in the 1900s. Wow, just to think about that. So what happened is the Great Depression and World War I led to the decline of mining operations and by 1950, production neared zero. The relatively early suspension of mining operations has left a lot more to discover. Uh, so there is a potential for the next big discovery of, of silver in Nevada. There are some uh, ongoing projects here uh, compared to some of the historic projects areas such as the Comstock. We've got Rawhide Mining, which is active, Round Mountain, uh, Kinross Gold, Aurora Hecla Mining is doing it, Bodhi, the Bodhi District which is another one that um, uh, is a historic mining area, and then uh, Candelaria, Silver One Resources, Black Rock has Tonopah West, Scorpio Gold has Mineral Ridge. So there's still active discoveries there and work 
Sterling Coeter Mining is, is also another one there that's active in Nevada. And so this is how geology and science comes together and technology uh, discovery, the Walker Lane Trend. The Tenopod District has seen little mining activity since the 1900s. Today, the district is uh, ready to host Nevada's next big silver discovery and is equipped with historic mine workings and data, transportation services, mining infrastructure, and power lines. So some of the equipment's there already, which is pretty interesting to see that they could use some of those resources. Some of it may need to be modernized for it, but nonetheless, uh, let's see how that works out. Total production from the Walker Lane trend, silver 509 million ounces and gold 53 million ounces from New Range Gold. The bulk of Nevada's mining comes from the Cortez and Carlin trends and the Walker Lane trend remains under the radar. Mining companies have taken note and are setting up operations to utilize Walker Lane's untapped potential. So very interesting indeed. Uh, so silver, especially with what's been going on the last uh, year and a half here, uh, the pandemic is, um, you know, there's been great demand. And even with the silver squeeze since January, we are starting to see uh, much more demand for silver, especially as things recover, electric vehicles, uh, the Green New Deal or some variation of it is going to lead to probably probably more demand for silver, which means there's going to be more mining uh, exploration out there. So uh, Nevada's uh, history as a silver state is continually being written, and uh, we will see what happens in the future. But it is fascinating. You know, Nevada as a state is 85% of it is owned by the federal government. And so finding these little areas and districts um, is proven to be a challenge, but also working with uh, uh, regulatory agencies and the like, be able to get that silver out of the ground is uh, certainly a continual challenge, um, but also an area of hope to be able to see uh, what's going on there in the silver state in terms of uh, grabbing some precious metal, silver, and gold too, by the way. Um, a lot of gold activity in Nevada. Fascinating indeed. We'll see how it plays out in the end, but a very interesting <clears throat> infographic here. I'm talking about the history of silver um, and the silver state itself, what brought Nevada to where it is. Fascinating indeed. Uh, so let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this, uh, this video here. Um, and encourage you, if you uh, haven't already, to click that little notification bell so that you can be apprised of the latest video as it makes its way into the platform here. And I want to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.